Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. I have been using first KDE Plasma and then GNOME, and before I move on to other desktop environments, I'd like to give my impressions and conclusions on each of them. I use both desktop environments for about a month each, doing all the recording, video editing, publishing and other type of stuff I do exclusively on KDE and GNOME, on the same machine. In the end, I must say I really enjoyed both desktops. Let's take a look at the differences. Default setup. Both default setups are easily legible. Plasma looks like what you'd expect if you're coming from Windows, with its bottom panel, menu and task manager, and the defaults are clean and simple, pretty welcoming for a new user. Once you start looking at menu entries though, it quickly gets more complicated, with a plethora of options showing up. Everything here is exposed to the user, sometimes to a fault. GNOME, on the other hand, is the exact opposite approach. The default metaphor is the opposite of what you're used to, with no active task management, no desktop icons, no application menu, no dock or taskbar. Activities are a good concept, easy to understand, but it goes against most other desktops I've used, so it took a while to get used to switching windows to the activities or using the keyboard. Options and configurations are very sparse, which means you can find what you're looking for very easily, if it's there. At least you know that if it doesn't show up in the preferences, it just doesn't exist. In the end, I felt Plasma was more natural at a first glance, since it doesn't depart from the conventions we've been accustomed to, and GNOME quickly became familiar, even though the adaptation period was a little longer. Configuration Contrary to what most people believe, both desktops can be quite configurable. Plasma has a plethora of options, plasmoids, layouts and panels, and as many configuration options as you want. You can tweak colors, themes, window borders and controls, and even the position of panels and toolbars on most applications, to get to the desktop and layout you want to use. You can't fault KDE on customization, it's the most configurable desktop environment I've ever used on any OS. GNOME, by default, has almost zero configuration. You can, however, tweak quite a few things through extensions and GNOME tweaks, but these come with a convoluted installation process. Look for GNOME tweaks, install it, then install extensions, and the browser add-on, and the host connector, then manage extensions through GNOME tweaks, where you found their own set of preferences. I understand the logic of offering a very clean and simple default desktop, but enabling extensions on one click, with all the browser extensions and host connector configured, or providing an extension store directly from GNOME software would be far easier, and would not clutter the interface whatsoever. I guess it must be the distro's job to implement these things by default, but still. For fans of desktop tweaking and configuration, KDE obviously takes the cake though. Look and feel. The default look of KDE is pleasing, with bright icons, nice gradients and shadows, and smooth animations switching from a menu to another, dragging windows around, and generally while using the system. The default theme, Breeze, looks good on plasmoids and application widgets, and it offers dark mode by default if you prefer that. Plasma looks modern and polished, and it feels natural to use, with each element fading in and out. GNOME, on the other hand, comes with Advaita. It is a big theme, there is a lot of padding around buttons, menus, and everything looks quite big. Icons are a bit dated, in my opinion, with muted colors. Advaita is generally very grey and doesn't look very appealing to me, although it is very functional and legible, with nothing catching your eye specifically, letting you focus on your work. Themes are supported on KDE, with three default widget themes installed, and Plasma themes can be modified and downloaded from an online library, which is great but application themes are harder to come by. You can install some from packages, such as the Oxygen theme, but others need to be compiled. Granted, you can change all the colors on every theme, but there is a lot less choice to change the look of an application widgets. Icons, mouse pointers and window borders are quite customizable as well, with an online library of available options. KDE even allows you to change the theme on GDK applications. GNOME does not support themes officially. But nevertheless, once you have installed GNOME tweaks, you can install easily a lot of new themes which work 99% of the time. Icons and mouse pointers are easily modifiable as well, although GNOME does not offer any integrated solution to download and install new icon themes. In the end, although the default GNOME looks a bit dull and grey compared to KDE's default colors, you can change its whole look more easily and make it look very different, compared to KDE which lets you change colors and icons, but restricts you on widget and application themes. Applications. As per applications, it's a tough one. GNOME seems to have a lot more applications available by default compared to KDE, but GNOME apps are severely lacking in features. K 
KDE Plasma has very stable apps, but little choice. Since most apps do everything and are extremely configurable, there is little incentive to work on a new project instead of contributing to an existing one. Default applications can sometimes look dated with out-of-place buttons or widgets and convoluted interfaces. They are powerful though and do not lack important features. Once you get familiar with a KDE application, you can pretty much do anything you like. GNOME, on the other hand, has a nice choice of different applications, but they have issues. Photos is too simple, music crashed a lot and contacts didn't support contact groups. One problem is desktop consistency. Since GNOME does away with menu bars, once you install something that does not strictly adhere to GNOME guidelines, it quickly looks out of place and behaves differently. The default GNOME library is big, with applications for almost any use, but once you need to step out of this ecosystem to find more features or a more stable application, you'll quickly get to a disjointed experience. In the end, I guess it all comes down to your uses. I would be perfectly fine using the default GNOME apps, and I like their clean interfaces more, but for users that are a bit more demanding, they will probably be too light on features. Performance In terms of performance, KDE Plasma has quick and smooth animations for panels and menus and uses little RAM. Applications open quickly and stay reactive even under load. The desktop loads quickly and does not seem to leak memory. GNOME also behaves nicely by default, but it uses more RAM and CPU. This has been greatly improved on 3.30 but for lower spec systems, GNOME might not be the right choice. With a lot of opened applications, animations in the shell did tend to slow down, especially while accessing the activities view. For users with systems less well equipped, KDE would probably be a lighter choice, but then again, there are other desktop environments more suited to older, less powerful computers, such as XFCE. Frustrations and niggles This might be personal, but I definitely had some moments of frustration while using both desktops environments. On KDE, I raged when I could not find the right category in which the setting I looked for was hidden, and the lack of application choices kinda annoyed me at times when I wanted to use something simple and got stuck with a powerful but convoluted program. The Plasmoid Move Resize interface was also a bit annoying, since to move these things you need to access the Plasma menu up top and then resize or move those Plasmoids. On GNOME, I ranted about how some apps would just crash on me at random, and I got frustrated by the shell in the beginning, trying to follow with open windows before I learned to use the keyboard and the activities view more. Having to install GNOME tweaks and some extensions to get more intense features also was a bit annoying, since it involves extra steps that, in my opinion, should have been made default by the distribution. I could use both desktop environments productively after a few hours, but Plasma's interface quickly became second nature, since it was closer to what I was used to, whereas GNOME stayed a bit more obscure for a day or so. In the end, after one month spent with each desktop environment, I really couldn't say which one I prefer. I went back to my trusty elementary as Juno for the time being, and I'm excited to keep covering the new features of GNOME and KDE. In terms of look and feel, KDE matches my taste more closely, but GNOME's interface and interface guidelines appeal to the minimalist in me. There are plenty of other desktop environments I have never tried. Budgie looks very interesting, Deepin seems to be offering something unique as well, and I never used Mate or Cinnamon either. XFCE and LXDE are completely unknown to me as well. Let me know which one I should try next. I'll also add a Twitter poll on my account, at the Linux EXP, so you can vote for the next one. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter, at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!